Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. I'm your reliable host, Derek. Well, you just call me a guy. We're working on our 540 cubic inch big block swap for the Chevelle here known as Liberty. We got a lot done, but we got a long road ahead of us. Things like a fuel tank, sending unit, fuel lines, fuel log, fuel regulator, carb plumbing, ignition wires, rear brakes, front brakes, master cylinder, breather brakes, steering wheels, rear shocks, and more. I have no idea how much we're gonna get done, but we better get our feet moving if we stand a chance. <laughs> Bradley's back here just mopping away. Doing a good job, buddy. So we had like nine snowflakes fall in Tennessee. This is a true story. The entire state is shut down. Fast food joints, Walmart closed. Parts stores are closing early. I've never seen anything like this. It is just, the kids are out of school for the week. The whole entire state. The reason I'm telling you that is I am waiting on particular parts. Things that I specifically overnighted days ago that I still don't have that I need to make this thing go. Make motor noises and stuff like that. For example, I need one more of these fittings or I can't put this into the fuel tank to put the fuel tank in to run the fuel lines. Things of that nature. It's just on and on and on. So we're gonna have to bounce around this list. I'm hoping some of this stuff shows up tomorrow. But like I said, we gotta just keep moving forward on anything at all that we can. So I think we're gonna start with the fuel making happener, start plumbing this in, and then I'm gonna put a fuel regulator up here on the firewall. I'll explain how that's gonna work because we're actually gonna be running a fuel injection pump for the carb. Yep, okay. So the first step is just gonna be plumbing this in so we can start running some of our fuel lines. I guess my hope is to get this part done up into the regulator at least minimum and then we can start maybe taking out the old fuel line because we're going to be replacing that now typically your fuel feed comes out this way and then you have a line running down here because most commonly you're going to have a mechanical pump like that or you might have a digital one but folks are still running the feed over here well i'm going to do it differently because i want this to look pretty clean is we're going to mount our regulator back here on the firewall and then can a guy just run a line this way and we're gonna flip this backwards. So fuel is coming in this way and it really doesn't matter. As long as the line is pressurized equally, it can come in this way or this way. Both bowls and needle and seat sets are gonna get the same amount of fuel. Then we can just stop here and wait until we get the tank in, which is laying back there because I'm waiting on fittings again, but maybe we can assemble it. It's just, we're gonna be all over the place. So let's go ahead and bust this open. First thing we gotta do is take these off in preparation for this setup here with a washer. Okay, can a guy get his juice belly over here? Yep, there we go. Take this and this washer out. Throw this in the carb accessory box. Might use on them later. I don't know. I don't know what, what the deal is there, okay? Here we go. Crack open this bad boy. Boy, I am running out of time to get this thing done and I ain't kidding you. We got a couple days left and then I've got to hit the road. And whatever it is is what it is, I guess. Or we might have to call it. I hope not. We'll see. Do what I can here. Let's plug into there. Boom. I should go get my AN wrench. Don't get the right wrench. Just get the croissant wrench. Lots of echo reverb. Okay. Yep. Oh, yep. Yep. 
This guy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do need to change this around. Normally it'd go this way and the fuel pressure gauge would be there, but we're going back hinder kind. So, boy, that thing's been beat on like a cabin screen door. <clears throat> we're gonna do some flippage. Flip. Okay, then, can a guy plug it in like that? Now I should have, I'll show you after we get the regulator mounted, I should have 794 fittings left over from 76 other projects. So I don't have to buy any more of this darned AN stuff. It's nice, but man, alive is expensive. Okay. I don't, that's barely even fitting. I don't understand. It's snugged. And then, ah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Snugged. Can't go too far with these. You'll ruin them. Badly. Regulators! Man up. <laughs> So, we're running this devil. And like I say, we can run, you know, a big, bigger fuel pump, like this guy here. I am decided if I'll use this one. This is a, I'm not even sure what this is, fried chicken 255? Yeah. So, it's a very common fuel pump, but it puts out way more pressure than what we need. So we're gonna be running this bad boy, which actually comes preset for four to 15 PS in the eyes, which is carburetor land time. So all you gotta do is run an inlet and a return back to the tank and then outlet to the carb. Boom, we're gonna have fresh, cool fuel circling through this really close to the fuel make it happener. Not gonna get any vapor locking or anything like that. It also comes with another spring if you wanna you know, bring the PSIs up. So what we're gonna do is mount it with this little bracket thing, like this, to the firewall. So let's find a spot back here. I'm thinking like, something like that, far enough away from the headers. And then we can run a line over there, and then we'll have our two lines going back to the tank. Now I have, 397 different other regulators, but they're all the high pressure ones. This is specific for EFI to carb, which is pretty slick. So let's get this mounted up. So I'm thinking this bracket is gonna go right here. Going through mounting options, we got this big Apollo 3 panel behind this right here. So I can't put traditional hardware together. So at times like this, I. I like to look at, you know, some of our forefathers, those that had some really good insight and inspiration in our history. I got to thinking about Theodore Roosevelt. I believe he was the one that said, when in doubt, self-tapper it out. You can look it up. So that's what we're gonna do. Right over here. Yep, this seems pretty good. Whoop, dropped one. Guess we'll go with two. Don't need all three. And okay, nothing smoking. No fire, I didn't hear a sizzle. We might be on to something. 
Okay, add another one. There we go. Can I find this one? Doubtful. Very. Ooh, there's a good quarter inch nut. Found the funnel. Good chunk of tape. Got some vacuum line. Ooh, a body bolt. That's a front pocket find. What else we got? I really ain't seeing it again. I think it's gone. Well, had to get another one over budget. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty stout. Yep, get out of here. These regulators have come a long ways over the years. Those cheesy ones with the twist style were really common, like when I was in high school and stuff. But what they don't tell you and what no one else tells you is the number on the twisty dial isn't necessarily pressure. Meaning you could turn it to seven, but that doesn't mean it's seven PSI. Just be aware, they're kind of junky is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Boom. Tighten up my O-ring fittings. Let's see how many gallons these leak. Turns on the bottom there. Okay, hopefully they leak none. You know what I mean? Now we can figure out the line from here to here, and we can run dash six on that and start digging through the old goodie box. So, just glancing at this, first thing I'm going to do is find my fittings. I like to put the fittings on whatever I'm making, as you guys saw on this stuff. Then I figure out my hose length. So you get them kind of pointing at each other. So I'm thinking like a straight and a 45 or 240. I don't know. We need an angle and a straightish to try to do this thing here. So we'll come over to my box of goodies. This stuff has been accumulated over the years from all the projects. And it's stuff that's was the wrong size, or ordered one too many on accident. I didn't use something that I that I thought I needed or something like that. You warming up my flannel. Here's some regulators I was talking about. So we got plenty of dash six in here. Uh, we just gotta kinda dig. See, like right there. Oh that's PTFE. That's the wrong kind, but you get what I'm saying. We got fittings. There's one right there. So we'll go through here, that's the bendy one I was talking about right there. Oh, hey, all right, what do you suppose the chances are this hose would work? It's dash six. <laughs> this works. No, that's not going to work. Oh, wait. Ooh, maybe. I'll be dipped. That just saved 40 bucks in a half hour. We've got solid mounts, yeah. It's got room to twist, even if so. I can't believe it, but I guess I got to. I'm looking, looking right at it, you know. Boom. And that is why I'm a hoarder. <laughs> well, that worked slick. I mean, this hose isn't gonna match the other hose, but I don't care about that. So now we're gonna have return coming down here and inlet here. I'm gonna have to run two lines, but I can't do that until I get that other fitting to put the tank in. Uh, this here is for boost reference. We can just plug that. When my other shipment that's lost in the storm shows up, we'll pull this out and put a fuel pressure gauge in there 
end here so I can set it at the regulator and also monitor it right here on the fuel make it happener. I ripped out that cheesy one that was up in here with like a plumber strap that had that copper line that was leaking all the time. That's gone. We'll just monitor it right here in who. So anyway, I think it's time we go ahead and start tearing this stuff out. This old pipe, it like runs through the coil down here, literally, and all that stuff. Get rid of that, and we're gonna be running two new Aon lines. One I'm gonna wrap in red tape when we get to that point. Red's for return, just so I can track them and stuff like that. But right now we're gonna be in demolition mode. Eventually, we'll start working on this tank. We could probably get it prepped. This is an angled tank. Uh, Tanks Inc. makes this. Every Chevelle on the planet needs one of these, 68 to 72. Gives you room for exhaust. Whereas the old tank, this one here, the traditional one, is your, I call them the suitcase tank. They look like a big suitcase. But it makes it really difficult to run duels out the back. This one leaks bad. It's got vents here, this stuff's pinched off, folded over. This is pinched and folded over. I mean, it's just, it worked for eighth mile drag racing. It's not gonna work for drag and drives and what we're doing. So this tank's gonna go away. And uh, I got new straps, came in the kit, filler neck. That's the sending unit there. So, that's a project we'll get to in a minute. But for now, let's start tearing out this old line right here. Well, this is what that line looks like. This went under the upper A arm there, some sort of splice, and then up over the rear. Of course, I'm gonna keep all these brackets that were on it and the hardware because this will fit six end line well and save money. These aren't cheap and there's a pile of them and the holes are already pre-drilled for these, so we'll see if we can utilize as much of that as we can. I think that must be the old air shock line. I got to uh, fasten up the battery cable in a couple spots with uh, some of that hardware. They were just double clamped on here, basically. And then the old fuel line is out. Well, once again, I apologize about the leg burner noise behind you there. I just, I gotta run it. Unfortunately, I tried running the heat that we put in. It does nothing. It does absolutely nothing except hurt the billfold. So I'm turning that junk off. And we're going back old school. You know what I mean? Letting that thing rip. I'll turn it off when I can, but I think the injector is a little dirty. She doesn't want to refire on me. So I'll run it for a while and then shut it down anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fuel tank. I think I'm gonna put it up on this little cheap wheelie thing. Well, only two wheels wheel, I guess. We'll start assembling it anyway, so that's ready to go once that fitting eventually shows up. Hip ya! So again, this is an aftermarket tank. We got a provision for a pump and a provision for the float both of which we have to set up and get in the tank here. So I'll kind of give you the gist here and then a guy's gonna get after it, but essentially that's what the pump assembly looks like with the pickup tubes, the strainer, and the pump on it. That's this unit right here. That'll go on this side. And you can see why we need to trim them. There's a bunch of math that's got to be done. And then this is a universal float level thing that's going to stick in here. Now I don't have a fuel gauge in the car 
but I'm gonna go ahead and wire this in or send a wire up to the cab. Someday it would be nice to have a fuel gauge, especially if we're gonna be doing drag and drive stuff. But uh, I don't think we're gonna get it this time around. So, here's all the mathesis we need to do. There's a chart here. If I remember right, if you measure one, you can find it and it'll give you all the lengths. You have to set how far it drops into the tank and then you gotta cut this arm for the lever action in there as well. It doesn't look like this, oh, it does have a basket in here. So there's a basket in here that keeps fuel right in this area. So we have to keep that in mind because that arm can't be too long anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig into this. Now I think these are more spare fittings and stuff I found and laid out. We'll probably use for the fuel lines. There's the sock. I had another pump I was thinking about using, but now I can't find it, so I guess not. So, all right, well, anyway. So a guy found it. This is an AEM pump. It's the same design or style. It's just less PSI, but that means it's gonna work less at the same volts and still produce more pressure than we need. So I think I'm gonna start with this one in the tank first, and then we'll throw this one in the trunk as a spare. So when this one burns out, then we can put whatever brand this one is in there. No brand, I guess. So uh, give me a few minutes. Gotta do a lot of measuring, get this stuff dolled up, get both these done and prepped. And then like I say, we're just waiting on these fittings to show up that we can actually get the tank in the car. Well, I think a guy has this set up. Followed all the constructions. Yeah, I had to read these things. Oof, mind bottling. And uh, this one is really the one that helped me because there's a big picture on it. You know what I mean? I uh, do not like the fact that I had to remove one of the support screws to get this to slide high enough for my math to work correctly. Half tank depth plus one eighth inch from here to center of pivot but I wanted to try to get it right so we have an accurate full or empty you know what I mean but I guess this is the get up so we could drop this in the tank with a gasket which is around here it is and some hard more and we should have our fuel sender installed okay guy is gonna see if he can dip this thing in here Let's see, this goes around that. Okay, already, already doesn't make sense. Can't, it's not gonna fit. Won't, won't go in. How? It's like this end piece needs to be cut off. It does, it does. I can't quite get this lined up without bending stuff. Okay, I'm gonna take the death wheel and hit ya! Bruce Lee this off really quick. Doesn't say I can't do it in the instructions. Hip, hip. <laughs> Wow, what's this made of? Guess I could have put it in the bench vise. <laughs> Too late. Yes. Okay, now that the integrity die is down, that's good. Aha! Which way do we want to swing it now? So that's in line with that. That's the wrong gasket. I was just test fitting it. You gotta test fit these things. 
I'm assuming I'm never going to get this back out now with how much I just struggled putting it in. So that's pretty good. Can't reach it on this side. It's even better. Okay. Aha! I did coerce it out. <sighs> what are you doing, Caprice? You're on night shift. Get busy! Oh, you are. I'm sorry, Cap. I gotta look which way this is supposed to sit in here. This is saying sideways. Oh, I suppose that helps when you accelerate. It's not doing this. Is there room to go that way? I don't know. I'm looking. Give me a second. Yeah, I think it's... This is the way it goes. Yep, 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 stuff and things, yeah. Okay. Losing my mind, take three. That's not the tool I just had. Oh, it's over here. It is getting late, per usual. Or early, I guess. What time is it? Can't see from here. That's probably better left a mystery. 17 cups of coffee and just two bowls of soup. My teeth are vibrating in my head. I think I've been duped. Okay. Quality fasteners. Gaskets even. Okay. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's it. It's it's on there. No. Okay. Now we're moving on to pop a rip a pop a few pumpa. You know this thing. More measuring and stuff. Sweet. Great. Grand. Fuel pump assembly complete. That's what that's going to look like. Uh, sent it a little too hard the first time with this tube here and goobered her up with the heat gun. Got her too hot and it was just bad. I had to cut another one. Put her back in there. Speaking of heat gun, while that was warming up, it felt really nice. I ran out of diesel fuel, so I just had the heat gun laying down keeping me warm it's about negative 15 out right now anywho just got to follow these instructions you find your your uh, depth of tank and then you figure out your return line then you figure out that guy and then you cut it all up and piece it together so let's go put this in the spare parts starting to collect some spare pieces We've got these are the 45s that didn't work for the other two cylinders, but we'll bring them for extras, a couple belts, extra one of those fittings. Got an extra cold case that I pulled out of uh, that kit, which is supposed to be for the Buick LeSabre, which we'll get back to someday, hopefully. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing a palapped in. Beep. Easy. She's a wide girl. Come on now. I'm trying to take my uh, zip tie off. But I want that. Come on now. Just get down in there. Just fighting me. But now I got my hose clamp turned the wrong way. Because I was worried about it touching the pump. There we go. Piece of pie. We want them this way. Send. Yeah. Believe that is correct. Yep. Well. Well. Wow, what is going on? Can't the guy just fasten? Yeah. 
Everything so twisted up. I can't believe it. What is the deal? We got hose clampage interference again. Okay. Well, there wasn't any hose clamp orientation guides. Here we are. This stubborn mule, I ought to just. Well, help me understand this. Well, I don't want it that way. Okay, I, I need a timeout. Hey, little feller, I need you to please move. Apparently this hose clamp needs to be in the next zip code. There we go. It's always the little things. They're gonna bite ya, you know. 20 minute pump install, taking three weeks, right now. There, pump is in. Well, as you can see, my brain's no longer working, it's so late. I think I'm gonna go lay it down, catch a couple Z's and four lambs and a couple fences. They're probably down, need mended to, but so there it goes. We'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, three toes crossed. We have these fittings and a couple other things we need to get this thing put together. Good night. Well, good morning. Balmy, I don't know, 20, 25 degrees in the shop this morning. It's pretty good. Did some property chores this morning and then ran into town, you know. Went around to all the different stores and places, tried to find some fittings and stuff for this. No dice, but I did pick up a bunch of brake line fittings and brake line itself, because I think we might have to switch gears here. I've got a couple last ditch efforts to find these fittings. I got some transmissions laying over here and some transmission coolers. See if I could find those. Still pending, overnighted them four days ago. Something like that. Sweet. So if we can't do this, I'm gonna have to switch into brakes, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, but unfortunately, my buddy Chad's on the way to help me get the exhaust done on this, but we really wanted this fuel tank in and the lines run so we can run the exhaust and avoid all of that stuff. So we might end up just throwing this tank in arbitrarily just so we have it there as reference, pulling it back down. But if I don't get those fittings, well, basically today, I don't know what I'm gonna do. To be honest, we might have to go to the Hardmore store and start doing some PEX plumbing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sweet? Found a transmission fitting out of a 4L65 4 neutral transmission. The threads are kind of hitting, or uh, this part is hitting the face of this, but I think I can wrench it in there. And, oh, I see, but this ain't tapered though. See, the other fitting is a tapered fitting. So it's smaller here and gets larger here. That's how it seals. See, it's already snug. Where this one's not tapered because it has a rubber O-ring that goes around here that seals to the transmission case. So unfortunately, this won't work either. Out here in Hubcap Hills, digging through some old trucks, I think I just hit the jackpot. Check this out. This is a Holly Sniper Retrofit drop-in deal. These guys right here, that's exactly what we need. Oh, that's great news. We can reuse this line too. Quite a few feet of line here. Pop these out. Before my hands stop moving. Oh, they're sticking to the fitting. And then uh, we can get to business putting this fuel system in finally. Hopefully before Chad gets here, we gotta figure out how to get that car up onto the lift so he can do a 
nice job on exhaust as he usually does this is the top pocket find if i've ever seen one i'll tell you that much right now what's this thing in the sky oh i kind of like it tingles the mustache we're gonna rumor jessica might be coming out helping since we're so behind on this thing using this gasoil kind of a fan of this stuff i haven't had it leak yet anyway and most of the time I have no idea what I'm doing. So it helps to have confidence in your sealer, at least. Right? Right. Okay. That one. Boy, after this fight, I'm gonna order a couple more of these just to have in the bin. You know what I mean? Yeah, good, good idea. I'll forget though. <laughs> we'll do this again next month. Okay. I do need to write. Because now I'm covered up my send and return. Because I'll forget that. Now we can set up our vent system. This is double vented one here and one on the tank itself. We'll get that ready. And then we'll also set up all of our wiring. And uh, we're gonna send all of that backwards, I believe is what we're gonna do. Yeah, through here. And all of our wiring connections can be in the rear of the tank. Kind of like a stock GMA body would be for um, fuel sender and whatnot. And I'm going to have, if I could find a male, female, something like that, so we can disconnect both of these, you know, if we need to swap them out quick on the side of the road, which will probably happen now that I mentioned it. Perfect. Ouch. Must be tight because I'm injuring myself. Well, guy dug around in the ground, found some wire we can use this for the pump. This could be our uh, sending, and then I'll dig around some more. I'm pretty sure there's a red wire over there and something we can use for a ground here. You get some fittings, burn all this in. I'll tape it, might even run it in a cheesy loom just back here where we'll have all the connections, and then we'll start worrying about lines. Guys got the wire licked out. This will work. So it should lay on the tank just like that. And then we'll worry about, you know, that stuff eh. later. Now moving on to lines. I've got one roll. The other one is coming off of a transmission. So over here on the old dyno mule, I guess that's what we'll call it. I got this line here that's already pre-leaking 47 gallons of ATF on the ground. So just need to get this fitting off and we'll uh, flush this line and just get it hooked to the tank basically keep it rolled like that that's what we're going to do with the other one too and then after the tank's up we can actually start fastening the line and figuring out how we want to run it where we want to run it etc etc this is going to go into a project this summer hopefully nope never have time let this hang off of the tire balancer, sparkulator, tester, charger upper, whirling drain station over here. Try to get most of this out and then I'll run 17 cans of brake clean through that and change one fitting and then we should be good. I think I just need to run straights off of this. Uh, maybe 145, well no, probably do a 45 here. Try to get them both running this way because we want to run them down the passenger side of the vehicle here got the lines run here red tape for me reds for return so at any point underneath the vehicle i know which line is going to be which because they're going to be run like this and end to end we'll know easily which one is the return line once we get them underneath the vehicle i've got to cut in a uh, filtre on the 
feed line or send. So last thing I gotta do is just figure out this vent really quick and we'll just let that hang as well. Something else we can button up at another time. So in this instance, guy's just gonna take this little Y thing and run some fuel line, which is overkill. And uh, probably under here, over this, and then we'll just run a tail and eventually we'll run this into a vent in the trunk or something like that. Guys under a rig, and apparently this is what a trunk pan looks like in a Chevelle, and frame rails and body mounts. So that's pretty neat. So this is gonna be the power wire. It used to go to the Holly Blue. You can see this has already been spliced. We're gonna try to fix that, or at least go into this so we don't have an extra fit in there. We'll probably ground it, the pump, and the sending unit to the frame rail. We'll deal with that afterwards, but what I was trying to say is I think we're gonna to try to shoot the fuel lines this way, kind of up high, and then over down to the frame, if at all possible. Boy, this rear end, beautiful piece. Probably a first and last for me. Anywho, so let's get this tank up in here. I'm just gonna struggle, chest press it, and have a ratchet ready so I can drive these in. I'm gonna to try to use the old straps first because they're already pre, actually I can't, can I? Because these are for a different tank. Never mind. We're really gonna struggle and have to bend the other straps on the fly to get it to go up. So that's what the tank looks like, 100% done. Bradley's here to help, so I can, you know, struggle less as sure-ish. He can help me hold it up there and We'll run the straps. So what are you bench pressing now? Um, like 95, almost 100. Almost 100? Pretty good, dude. Keep it up. So normally there's rubber that goes around these tanks. Wasn't included in the kit. For now, not worried about it. Remind me to put it on a list we'll never get to, to get the factory rubber lining underneath the hangers. Okay, so let's carry this over there, get it under the car. Got the hoses bundled up. Worry about them later. Okay, slide. Perfect. Then we'll go back. Looking good. Now we should be able to kind of just lift it this way in. Oh, your sweatshirt. Ouch. Okay, let's see. There. Plus, it's a lot easier when you have help. Yeah. Uh, a couple more years, we'll have you full time up in her. Wow. You want to do this one? Sure. It's pretty fun. I was going to tell you to squint, but I forgot I had you put glasses on. Let me get it started some, though, just so it doesn't get cross-threaded. There. You can finish cross-threading it. That's good. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Boom. Lickety with the splits. Now, we just gotta do this. Boop, boop. And the tank is in. Chad Dunn showed up. And I says, you're early. And he says, you're late. Yeah, time got away from me. So, we're switching gears completely because for him to start on exhaust, I've got a bajillion things that I could be doing. So we're just gonna try to jerry this thing up and get it running, which means thrash in the drive shaft quick, which is out of the Monte Barrow. So Monte Barrow is borrowing back a drive shaft. We're using two plug wires, lightning hoses off of the 400 I built for the dually that was laying on the ground. Got to get the shift linkage in quick. And then we're going to hang a gas jug off of the hood spring or something and try to get this thing fired up enough to just crawl itself 
onto the lift next door. And then while he's working on exhaust, I could be wiring and plumbing the fuel lines and just, you know, the list. Okay, so Chad's finishing bolting up the drive shaft under there and we discovered the U-joint isn't correct. And it takes a 1350 U-joint. These are all the measurements I took on that drive shaft. I got another one being built. I don't know how that's gonna work. I might have to have Chad, not Chad, or the other Chad, pick it up because he's gonna haul this to Florida for me because I'm supposed to fly to sick week from something I'm doing in Texas. Maybe he can pick it up or maybe Jessica can, but we'll have to try to figure that out. This will be good enough to scoot around, but definitely not good enough to drive. We don't have brakes. We got kind of a makeshift fuel system going on. It's just gravity fed. Hopefully it's gonna feed enough fuel. Keep this thirsty big thing ready. Threw on two lightning hoses. Just gotta crawl underneath. I got to, I'm trying to find all the hardware for the, the uh, shift linkage. So I can get that set up in the car so we can grab a gear. And then we're just gonna pull out, try to do a U-turn and head right back in with no brakes and no throttle. So everything's normal, basically. Got the billet specialties back on with the half inch lugs now and just cleared these bare brakes. We spent a lot of time with measuring and using this particular wheel for backspacing and all of that. And it looks excellent. Just reminded me that I ordered a set of tires that also haven't shown up because these are almost through the wear bar. So that's great. We might just end up running these, I guess. Setting the shifter up right now. He's almost got the cable through. So in a minute, he's gonna yell at me to go to first and he's gonna make sure that the cable can slide in and out of the arm easy. And then I'll go back to park. We'll test that again. And if those two slide in and out equally as good or as then it should find every gear within the detents of the shifter well that's how it normally works but here at vice grip garage that'll probably just snap off the floor and it'll get stuck in seconds somehow two steps forward 14.9 steps backwards in liberty right now because we were just uh adjusting the shifter and i realized that my brand new Pro stick, which I thought was going to be incredible for this operation, does not gate reverse pattern. So it'll gate like if you're first all the way back, push forward, it'll gate to second, then you hold the trigger or the lever, and it'll gate to third, and then you let go, and then it'll gate to neutral. But if it's in neutral and you pull back, it goes all the way to third. And there's going to be enough going on in this car to not have to sit here and gingerly try to shift from first to second, because that's what we had going on with that um, quarter stick, is you couldn't find a gear. You had to very, you had to really focus on it, where the one I wanted is you could just ratchet. Anyway, long story short, we dug in the pile, which is now Charlotte, and got the other shifter out of that, and you guys have seen that one a lot. It's the same one on the Chevelle, where you can just slam backwards on it or forward and it's only going to go in that gear so you can start off in first we could have the trans brake on which i'm going to lose those buttons now probably so i'll wire up toggle switches up sun visor or something i don't know and then bam you could just hit second and hit third and that's how we're going to get a consistent time because if you take things away like oh i missed a shift or i shifted slow or whatever you could start focusing on things like getting the car to leave faster, straighter, tire pressures, RPM that you're on the trans brake, instead of fiddling around with, oh, I shifted to second slow, or I went first to third, or whatever it may be. So here's what we're looking at. So the floor is looking like Swiss cheese because it's had 37 shifters over the years. We're using nut certs on this one now. This guy is gonna go in here. It would have been better up on the hump, but belted in my friend Chad, not this Chad or the other Chad, or Chad from Iowa, their arms went in reach. They're like T-Rexes, okay? So we had to bring her back here. But we're gonna bolt this one in, and I'm gonna try, even if this side doesn't have a cover, I don't really care, I'm gonna try to cannibalize those switches, and maybe bolt them in here and just let them hang out the side, I don't know. Otherwise, Chad's gonna run to town and get a couple odds and ends. Maybe we can get some momentary switches. We can just, like, something this switch doesn't do anything and this one's gone and this one's not hooked to anything or yeah this one so there's spots 
whatever we'll figure it out okay guys got the shifter in got it adjusted got the buttons cobbled in here the wires are coming out down here um, it's very solid with the uh, nut certs cables are gonna work out had to cannibalize the other one but we're making it work working towards firing this thing up gonna give her a splash of Kikoman this works oh it is working I'm gonna start carrying this thing around About half full this thing takes a lot more fuel carb than we thought we thought we were th flooding it last time we weren't even remotely close it needed way more fuel and we guessed on timing hopefully it'll get us close enough to fire off before we crank on I wanted to show you this thing I bought this as a coolant overflow thing for a different project that was too bulky and didn't fit might actually use it in here because this old jazz container isn't looking very good. Anywho, what I'm trying to say is I might transform this into a little mini fuel jug thing here. You can see here we got a sight on it. We're almost out. I filled this with weed whacker gas, so it has a little bit of two-stroke oil, but mostly because it has clean non-ethanol 93 gas in it. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and try to fire this thing up, get it idling, mazel throw in some ice cube juice, stuff like that. We're going to have to wheel it around and do all this. Chad ran into town for me to get a throttle cable. Forgot about that completely. We could run it from a string, but I don't know. We'll see. He's getting a clip for uh, the duster over there. We're also tinkering on that a little bit. Went ahead and fattened up the idle circuit a little bit. Turned up the idle. It is cold, 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 and we got 540 cubic inches. Again, we guessed on the timing. We got the soy sauce in it. I'm going to turn the battery on here. And then we'll uh, say on, MSD box is flashing. Oh, I need to rewire that. It's supposed to be on a switch. So ignition should be hot. Give her a couple shots of soy sauce. There we go. Fire in the hole. Nope. Bring in the thunders. Shut it down. I got to rewire that. I don't know what. Well, I know what I did wrong. Somehow I got my 12 volt ignition mixed up with the switch. So once you turn the battery on, it must be on the wrong pin on the bus because the ignition is full power. You don't want that in drag, well, any car, you got to shut a car off, but in a drag car specifically, you want to be able to shut the fuel pump off and the ignition off independently or have the ability to shut them down at the same time. Hey, the thing fired right up immediately. And uh, that's going to be enough to move it around. Got to find some ice cube juice in here. First, I gotta rewire that ignition before we get too far. Hopefully before Chad gets back. A little fuel tank thingy. It was full. <laughs> it's down to about here. Tell you what, two things say America. Taxes and the sound of a big block open header. And I ain't getting it. Well, it took me a couple minutes, but I figured it out here. Because um, everything is wired white. 
like all the big wiring and it's like THHN for like wiring commercial buildings and stuff like that but I finally tracked it to that wire right there it is energized through that post which is kicked on with the main battery switch and then when you flip the toggle switch it energizes that so I need to swing this over to a post and join it with my 12 volt uh, right here and that'll be the switched for the ignition box and that'll resolve our issue disregard that I see what I was trying to do here by taking that off of that was energizing this bus bar essentially with the ignition which has the fan relay wired in the uh, USB charger um, and the coil which was disconnected which is this orange one so I just need to disconnect coil and hook mine back up which is to the MSD reconnect that to that so when we flip the ignition switch this whole row is going to light up because if the car is sitting and we want to run just the fans for example or charge a phone or whatever you can flip that on and that'll control that and then if you want fuel pump that's going to be on a separate switch so run that nut back down move this down to here and we'll test it all right so now the battery is hot but the ignition isn't on and this green light's not on but if i flip this on we should get a green light and we should get a red flashing light on that msd box yep there it is flash 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 and we got our green light so that's all set just got to jam this back in tighten that up so guys moving on to the throttle cable this is your typical old school gm style and it is not going to work because it's too short on the other side so i'm going to snip this here just pinch this we'll push it right through the firewall and then i got a super cheesy little mr gasket thing that should hopefully work as long as it's doing this correctly mostly this not so much this then we're good so how these work is pretty simple we just feed the cable through the hole in the pedal and then feed it through the body of the cable itself and then we'll have a washer on each side and then we'll tighten this nut on the firewall and then on the cover rudder side we can uh, choose what kind of style we want this could work uh, that goes with this so you run that into the car this goes on there pretty simple it comes with the cotter pin these are okay get you done in a pinch but the thing i don't like is the sleeving always collapses if you don't get them set up exactly correct like say you have squishy carpet or something like that this will collapse and then it'll return to idle fine but the next time you go to floor it you're not going to get all of it I really prefer cables like the ones that Motion Raceworks makes because they don't do that. But I don't, I just didn't have enough time to get it here. And it was an oversight on my behalf that this one wasn't going to work. You can see how short it is. So a guy's got that bolted in. I used a big washer. Um, I'm not sure where it came from. It was laying on the ground. Hollered her out to fit. Covers that hole well. The washers in the kit are too small. Now I got this tape on here because that's about where I'm aiming. I want a little bit of slack in here. This engine shouldn't move. It's a solid mount, but there might be a little twist. We don't want this to get, you know, tugged on. So I'm going to take the death wheel, snip it off right there. Then we can use this piece, cap it, snap it into place, and then we'll start making our adjustment up on the fuel and make it happener, which is make it fuel happen. Okay, I think we're finally ready to move this thing. We got the duster pulled out. We're gonna fire this thing up and drive out. I almost forgot we didn't have shift juice in it and the blood stick checker was gone. But we made one with the push-in breather for a valve cover cap and some 10 AN off of the Independence uh, breather system. It'll work for now. Threw some juice in it. Just gonna try to crawl it around get her back up on the lift, and then the real work starts. Great. Grand. 
Come on, blanket, Chevelle. Okay. Here we go. So uh, we're going to run these fuel lines really quick. We're going to go up and over, what would we call this Chad, not Chad or the other Chad? The suspension bulkhead thing? That sounds like something good. Yeah, I don't know, fancy words. We're going to go up and over that so we stay out of the way of the cool exhaust Chad's going to run. And then we'll come probably down, follow this battery cable. And then I like to come and go inside the frame rail like this to protect it. So when you're bottoming out and stuff like that, you're not hitting your fuel lines. And then also we can hide. I got to put a filter in here as well. And then we'll run up like we've been talking and go probably right up through here and catch that regulator. Can we lift this up six feet? I'm hunched over. Yeah. <laughs> kind of difficult to see, but we got the line running. Up through there, clamped there, clamped there, clamped, double clamped there, there. Runs up here, and I've decided to put the filter right up here where we can maintenance it easily. That's this guy right here. We'll wait to do that. Right now, I'm working on the wiring. Back here, gonna get this done while it's in my teeth. So I drilled and tapped. This guy, that's gonna be our ground. I'm gonna pull this out and clean the metal up just a little bit more. And then boop, nice short clean ground. This right here is gonna get a plug. That'll plug into that. This is gonna get coiled up and stored for later. Whoop. That'll be the uh, fuel gauge that'll never get put in. But then this will be all buttoned down. We should actually be able to test fire the fuel pump. Well, guys got that wired up, and this is looped up. If I get super ambitious, we'll try to hook a fuel gauge up before we leave, but I really don't think we're gonna get there. It's looking good though, it's coming together. I can't reach the list on the windshield. It is very, very, very late. I think I'm gonna call it a night, or morning, or whatever it is. Get a few hours of sleep, come back out in the morning. I gotta run a brake line and do some other stuff. And Chad's coming back for the exhaust. We were hoping to get it done today, but there was so much other stuff that took a bunch of time that was just piddly, like the shifter. But it needs to get done nonetheless. And I think I talked Donnie into coming down and helping out too. Uh, so that'll be great. We'll work on some shock stuff. I can finish the fuel up, check and do the exhaust. We could get hopefully a majority of the punch list done. And we're getting close. Tomorrow's the last day I can touch this car, so hopefully it's to where I can hand it to Chad, not Chad or the other Chad, but North Carolina Chad. And he can finish it down in Florida before I get there. We'll see. I love this car though. It's gonna be a really nice, fun car when we're done. See you in the morning. Well, re good morning, Urist. Got the diesel heaters running for a while now. It was 25 degrees when I came out here. Kind of got the tin can effect going on. Actually, uh, went and borrowed back the diesel heater I gave to my neighbor. Got two running. Try to keep Chad and Donnie warm. I, I got the Eskimo blood. I'm doing okay. Was going to start on the brake line in the rear, but I think I'm actually going to finish the fuel system first this morning because we got fuel lines hanging. I'd like to button that up and be done. Then I can move to the rear and start tackling this brake line that needs to get done before I get in the Chad's way. Gotta hustle, they're on the way. Gotta get a guy's spaceship fuel tank out of here and return's gonna run straight up, boom, right to there. And then this is our feed. See how handy it is to label it. Feed's gonna come up. We're gonna put that filter probably right here. So I'm gonna make this 90 a short piece and get the filter in first, then we can figure out the difference. 
Okay, gonna stab this like your average 7-Eleven customer. And of course, we're not gonna look what's behind it. We'll just pretend we did, you know. So far, that seems to be doing something. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, no explosions, no smoke. Snug that fitting up. Oh. I put uh, foam on the back of this so it doesn't rub on the filter. But I'll be if it twirled on me. Got to straighten her out. Okay. Come on now. Speaking of straightened, whatever happened to dire straights? There we go. Okay, we're gonna lift her up. I gotta get the wheel off to make the fitting. It's gonna be short, but also we know we gotta dig in the brakes. My favorite soon anyway. So up we go. Right about there. Death, death check. Seems pretty good. Look at that. It should go a little bit more. Get it on a lock. Well, that was quite a bit more. But now it's locked and I can shut the air compressor off. <laughs> Sweet. So the Bayer equipment, which I'll show you here in a minute, upgrades these small 7 16 studs to big ol' half inch. So I got new lugs on the way, which based on shipping recently, because four pieces of snow fell and there's a chunk of ice the size of a quarter on a highway somewhere in Tennessee, takes about nine days now. Those probably won't show up, so I'll have to use the 10 lugs I have in the rear and disperse them evenly until we get to Florida and then we'll figure it out. Plan. If you've never felt a belay wheel before, it is absolutely incredible how just like light these tires are. It's something else now we've got direct access in here this is the fitting that needs to go here Boop. and then we'll go ahead and make this one up too it's going to go up to there and that'll be pretty tidy and we can maintenance this very very easily just by leaning over the fender we don't have to crawl into the car or anything like that but it's a brand new fuel system all new lines new tank new pumps everything new fuel make it happener so it should be pristine and we shouldn't have to worry about changing that for a long time to come. Got these lines cut where they need to go. I wrap them with electrical tape and then I hit them with the old death wheel. And it just seems to make a nice flush cut. Now I gotta take carb cleaner and flush this hose. Spray up, let it drain, spray up, let it drain. I wanna make sure I don't get any rubber at all in the system. Now we can go ahead and put some fittings on, get these two connected, and then we're plumbed. Well, that is going to do it for the fuel system. Decided to swing this over here and bring it down for two reasons. One, I ran out of straight fittings, so that's pretty neat. And two, I don't mind it because it's bringing it away from the engine, away from the heat, and then I can bind them up and got it strapped here. So now we have support right around here, two places and then right here, so they're not gonna be flopping around or getting close to that. So that's all done. So now, I think I gotta move on to the brake master cylinder. And now with this brake master cylinder, it's still gonna be a manual, but it's gonna be a Bayer master cylinder, which is designed for disc-disc, and it has a proportioning valve for the rear, so we can adjust how much brake bias there is, or basically, when you mash on the pedal, panicking, coming across the finish line sideways, 
you could adjust, say, 70% front, 30% rear, or 80-20, or whatever the car feels like it needs or wants. We could do that right at the master cylinder. I need to start there first because in order to change the rear line, I need to figure out where that line is going and land it into the actual distribution or proportioning valve. So let's tear the old one off, get the new one bolted up. We got to figure out the rod throw. I believe that's 0 0.990 total from face to depressed piston. Some GMs are short, some are long. I don't know yet, haven't looked at it. I don't think we've been into the brakes other than new soft lines on this and uh, hardware in the front, if I remember correctly. So get the car down, start tearing into it, and then the fun part, bending and running a bajillion lines. But I'll show you the Bayer equipment. Last night when I said I was going to sleep, nope, oh, here I was for another hour and a half, opening boxes, making sure I had everything, looking at parts, you know, the usual. So this mess is going on here. We've got a new spindle. It's pre-packed with bearings. We've got our Bayer master cylinder. We've got slotted and drilled rotors. These beautiful red, white, and blue. These match the rear. When I called them, I said, I'm gonna panic. I need stuff now. I'll take any color you got. And they said, nope, we sent you the red, white, and blue. We're gonna make some more of those for you. So thanks to those guys. We'll have matching beautiful rotors. Got all the bracketry. We got hardware bag. I kind of started cruising through the constructions because, you know, because I don't know that we'll use them. We've got, this is that proportioning valve. I got to crack that open, get this mounted up, get it mounted to this, figure out how that works. And then we'll get the car down and get wrenching. Just running a quick test here, set all this in to make sure we're not gonna have any wheel interference. It's tight once again, but it's good. We're gonna be just fine there, so that's great news. Here's a closer look of what we got to accomplish here. This has gotta come out. These lines need to be loosened. We need to keep this in line and still needs to be wired. We gotta take that into consideration. This distribution block, now pinched between the header and the frame has to come out. Uh, I might actually start there. And then yeah, it looks like we put rubber lines in trying to get this home. So that fitting should come out, which doesn't really matter because we're gonna be putting new stainless lines on anyway. And eventually we'll probably move to a tubular upper and lower control arm. But right now we don't have the time because I'd have to drop the shock, the spring, We'd have to bust all this apart. We'd have to do ball joints. We'd have to get it aligned. We just don't have it in our budget as far as time goes. So uh, we'll do that some other time. Right now, we just need to get this thing to stop properly. Hey, Chad's back. Uh, he's gonna start on the exhaust. I wanted to try to get that rear brake line in, but didn't quite make it, but that's okay. The exhaust is more important being he's here to do it. So we'll have him do that. While he's doing that, I can tear into the drums, start figuring out the disc side of it, and get the stainless line to the tab on the frame. And then when he's done with the exhaust, then we'll go back to mounting the master cylinder. A little bit out of order, but we're gonna make it happen. Brought some pizza in for the guys. Of course, you gotta go with pepperoni and barbecue sauce. Gonna crank some tunes, wet the back neck, get to work. Guy's got the captain's side, dinner plate breaks in. Looks fantastic, pretty simple process, but ran into a huge, huge roadblock. On the drinker side, I was in the teardown process. Went to chisel on this and noticed some movement. Upper control arm bushings are absolutely shot. 
So now I either need to call around and try to find bushings, and then we got to find a press because I don't own one to try to press those bushings in to fix the stock upper control arm before we put this back together, or I bite the bullet and strip this thing down to the frame in the front and put the tubular control arms in, which I have, which obviously have new bushings and ball joints and everything else. Either way, it's added another six to eight hours of labor into this car that I don't have. Today was supposed to be it, so this is going to get really, really interesting. Well, the guy has called around to every part shop I could think of within 60 miles. No one can get the bushings today, so that's not an option. The only option we have to keep this project moving forward, well, two options, quit, figure something else out, a different car. Or, we go ahead and put these tubular control arms in. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. It really is. It's not difficult work, it's just very time consuming. A lot of prying and hammering and wrenching and tight spaces. And then we've got to figure out an alignment as well, which I definitely don't have time. We'll just have to run a string and figure that out. But that's, we'll get to that water when the bridge shows up. So let me show you what we got here. These are from TRZ. They're out of Florida. It's just guys that did the rear sway stuff and trailing arms. All made in America right here. Uh, this is going to not only lower the car significantly in the front, but these control arms are also very low to the ground. So that's something we're going to have to pay attention to because they're designed to have the front end up, you know, for drag racing <clears throat> when you're on the throttle or accelerating. So I just wanted to make sure we had the parts. This looks like a truck bolt-in ball joint for the upper. Got both of those. Lower comes with it. It's got the hardware. So now, I guess I'm just gonna start tearing into this. I'm gonna keep it on the lift. It's easier to do on the ground, getting this old spring out. I may just torch that. And uh, I'm gonna get as much disassembled as I can so Chad can keep working on the exhaust because now I'm, I'm way, 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 way behind. Let's jump in and see if we can get this side stripped to the frame. Everything's gotta come off. Spindle, upper control arm, lower control arm, tie rod's gotta be unhooked, sway bar's gotta be unhooked, shock's gotta come out, spring's gotta come out, you name it, it's just a frame horn basically when we're done. Well, the guy's got this side all the way stripped down and uh, knock some loose paint off here. Gonna powder coat this since we're going this far on it. And by that I mean just, tss, 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 you know, DE 1634. Missing a bumper bolt, we'll ignore that. Gotta do the same on the other side. I gotta find the hardware bag I already lost to the control arms. And then we'll get this uh, back together as soon as the paint dries. It's a little bit harder going together because usually the bushings are pretty taunt in the ears here and it's bending and prying and pushing and twisting and all sorts of stuff. And then we've got to set up the coil springs as well, which we'll be guessing on right height on that. So still letting my runs dry up here. So assembling the upper control arm, look at this. Made in America. I'd like to see that. This is obviously the passenger side. We had to put the ball joint in put the grease zerk in, the hardware. Uh, I believe this is like a bolt-in truck kind of style, which is nice, replacing this. We'll grease it up once we get it in the rig. It looks like the coilover runs right into the upper control arm. That's a pretty cool design. Once this dries, we'll bolt this into here. I've got some new hardware. And uh, moving to fine thread, set of course, you know, so we can over torque it better. And we'll have to try to rough alignment in at some point, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'll probably start with the lower here in just a minute because I could do that while this is still drying. And then move to the upper. And then when we get to the spindle, I gotta do what I did on the other side, which is put the bracketry and all that stuff on for the disc brakes. Oh, into the shock elators here. These are looking great. Slid right in out of the ones that I've done. It's normally a fight. And these slid right in, had zero issues. This looks really nice. So now we got AFCO shocks uh, through TRZ. And these are adjustable here and up here. 
and we're going to be running the QA1 coil springs, which go over top of this, <coughs> essentially. And these will slide up in the stock bucket there, so it retains all this. We don't have to cut any of the original frame up, but we're going to get the benefit of choosing our coil spring. I believe this one's a 450 based on the part number. And then we can control rebound and all of that stuff with this and ride height, which we're going to be completely guessing at initially. And then uh, I'll probably count turns from bottom and try to do the other one the exact same way. So at least we know we're level initially. And then we can count rotations, which is what I did on a wagon. I just did with um, QA1 and it seemed to work out to get the right height adjusted. Donnie's jumping in on the rear and he's going to put AFCOs in the back. And those have the T-bar that goes right up into the stock position so we don't have to cut up the body to put in the bracket, the whole different kind of shocks. So he's going to slide underneath and do that. And we're up here working on this. all done and we kind of got the real deal going on here we're now tubular upper and lower coil overs fully adjustable I'm gonna check the ride height because we may have to make some adjustments so we'll drop this down see where we're at and we can adjust it just by turning this buckle up or down and then we lock it with the allen keys on that so let's drop it down see what we got going on now, I personally think this is going to be too low, but I had to start somewhere. So we went with 10 turns. We'll see what 10 turns shows us. And we have to keep in mind it's got to settle too. Once you drive these and skate them around a little bit, it'll also settle out. <coughs> okay. Tires are touching there. Oh yeah, I can't even get off my my uh, jack stand pad thing. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? How can I get? Oh boy, I'm gonna think for a minute. I don't think this is going to be enough either. There we go. Now, well, I could switch my jack setup in a minute, but let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Yep. If I take that 2 by fur out, which is no longer a 2 by fur, you know, about an inch and a half, inch and three quarter, it's going to give us a little bit of rake. I want to see it, so let's do it. Plan. Okay, so now I need to somehow get this out, probably like that. Okay, good plan. A short one. Might have to lift this by the headers, unfortunately. Bring this right back into position. Lift on it. Ooh, just caught the frame. Good. Hello. You're not going to believe this you're going to have to because you're looking right at it. I actually greased this front end. Yeah, I said it. Greased. Okay. Break it down. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. The front and the rear is going to sink a little bit looks a tiny bit goofy because we have a smaller 275 5015 in the rear 
instead of a taller, we can go a little taller, a little wider, but we're on a small tire and we want a smaller circumference, which is gonna help with our 325 gear. That's the same tire and wheel we did on the Independent. So because the gear wasn't correct, you could compensate with a smaller tire. So we're gonna do the same here, to keep the same setup. That is looking good. I don't see any reason to make any changes right now. So I think I'll go ahead and lock those adjustment rings down. Right height, done. Tubular upper and lower is done. Coil overs, front and rear, done. Nine inch in there. It's looking good. It's looking real good. So I'm finally back to my primary objective that we started this morning, which is get this brake master cylinder out of here. Just gonna knock these lines off quick, pull those two bolts off, and then I'll show you what we got as far as rod and, and the uh, piston and the brake master cylinder, because we'll have to adjust the Bayer to match. My guess is we have a longer shaft in here, or rod, but we ain't gonna know until the crow makes the bread, or whatever whatever that saying is. Okay, there are also some deer skins right here. Yeah, they're right over here. Bradley's helping clean tonight. He's been really good helping out. He realizes how busy I am. And so the least he can do is Try to pick up the place. Yep, we got a longer rod. This one's good. Ain't gonna waste it. Let's go put it on the parts shelf. We'll use it on something. So here's what we're left with on the firewall here. I think I'm gonna get the wire wheel in here quick. We'll clean this up just to tickle. And uh, powder coat the firewall as well. Powder coating! Not often you have these off. Mazel clean on it. Yep, good enough. This looks like the right color powder coating. Yep. Let those run dry. Perfect. Miles will make a wobble pop. See, so this is already set up for that. See how it's got some depth to it? Otherwise, we would add this shuttle. This would go in there and elongate this for the shorter rod, but we have a longer one. So this should go right on with no issues. Just like that. So now this proportioning valve will bolt up right underneath the master and we've got out for rear and out for front on the bottom. So I'll get this bolted up there and we'll take a look. There are some little ferrules we gotta put in here in order to use the tube nuts, because they're also designed to use a banjo if you want to, which is pretty cool, but anywho, I'll get this snugged in there. Bzzz. That's teleportation noises. After a long night, early, 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 earlier, earlier hours in the mornings, we finally threw the Chevelle on the trailer and got it up to volunteer muffler in Cookville to finish this thing for a couple different reasons. One, I needed to get Chad on home turf to finish the exhaust. Three inch over the axles and some tips, some stuff up here, which he already got done early this morning. And then I needed parts and I needed to rob it off of my other vehicles that are up here like the DeLorean. I got a bad out of box fuel pressure regulator. Well, I shouldn't say bad. It was supposed to come with a spring installed. I read the constructions 52 times. Yeah, I read them. I didn't get all the way through them. I glanced. And it was supposed to have the carburetor spring installed, 4 to 12 PSI. 
So I took the fuel injection spring and just threw that one away because I wouldn't need it. Well, come to find out the wrong spring was installed in the regulator, so I didn't have the right fuel pressure. So that fuel pressure regulator, in a sense, was then no good. I don't have the spring for it. But I remembered that I had one on the DeLorean because we ran a 255 electric pump to dual carbs on that, and that's sitting up here. So robbed that off the rear firewall, got that into the car, and now the fuel pressure is taken care of. I still need to finish the brakes. I got some fittings overnighted up here, and uh, I got to finish that up really quick. We're going to put a fuel gauge in it, some very small minor details. Ran and got a new drive shaft yesterday, or was that this morning? I can't even remember. I don't even know what day it is at this point. Got to put that in. We should be able to move the car around under its own power, brake, stop, go, maybe even test the line lock and the trans brake here in a minute. But for now, I just got to start thrashing. So I've got the old drive shaft out here, and this is our new one, and you can see it's quite a bit beefier on both ends. Should handle the power, hopefully. And some trans brake launches. Needed it to be a little bit longer, and we can see we've got that here. So fingers crossed, this should slide right in. Yeah. Shouldn't have any issues. Well, we can mark that off the list. And speaking of marking off the list, beautiful exhaust work. And went ahead and put the actual correct Chevelle tips on it. So it's going to sound great and look great. Charles is here to pick up the duster. You guys gonna love this car? We love it. Thank you so much, Gary. You're very welcome. Happy, happy man. I'm I'm grateful Thank to have the opportunity. Well. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, Charles. What do you think of the duster? Oh, I love this thing. <laughs> it is awesome. You're gonna drive it home. You got hour and a half, something like that. Yes, sir. Hour and a half. That's awesome. We're going to go eat lunch, hang out for a little bit, and then uh, pass the title off to Charles here, and he's going to head home. That's it for the duster. We may see it again. We're going to keep in touch. He's actually pretty local, so that's pretty neat how that worked out. Very good. Yeah. You got an independent shirt. Looks like you got a hat. Got the hat. Got the glasses. Nice. And he gets the duster. That's pretty cool. Well, that was a good time. Duster's going to a great home. Really good folks. Thanks to everyone who entered for a chance to win that thing. We'll have something coming up soon though, don't worry. So we got all new brake lines running in the rear, except this soft rubber hose. That's the one that was in the car. And it's not looking too hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that while we got it up on the lift here. See what it sounds like with the magna flows. Oh, yeah. Man, that sounds good. We timed it yet or no? No. No. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say that sounds a little lazy, but. Hoses, timing, and front brake lines. I've got this side up in, this side. Got to tighten some fittings up, and uh, we could start bleeding the brakes soon, which I'm sure will end up being a process. I do have to put a lower rad hose in. That thing is uh, leaking on the water pump side, not the rad side, but the water pump side. So can't have any drips. You pull into the burnout box staging area something dripping uh they'll pull you right off seals fine here it's just it keeps the 
surface of the pump or something. I'm not sure, but got to get it fixed. We're on the bleeding brakes right now. Had issues with this fitting right here. This is a dash end fitting to a tube nut kind of deal, but this collar was bottoming out on this nut before it would make contact in here. So had to pull these off and just zip them with the flap disc, shorten them up. And now it's holding pressure. Donnie's pumping, Chad's cracking. Things are happening. We're making a mess. All right, we're gonna warm it up, top it off with water. I gotta set the floats and the fuel make it happener. And then we're gonna set the timing here. As soon as we get some heat in the motor. here so first thing we'll pump the brake hold the line lock not working nope let's try the trans brake oh I gotta flip the switch we put a safety switch in that's my bad so we did that for that exact reason. If you're driving down the highway or the road and you accidentally bump these switches, you don't want to activate the line lock or the trans brake. It's bad, bad news. So now you have to flip this on. Now we're sending power to these switches. Now they'll activate. So pump it, line lock. Oh, I killed it. That's working. Okay, next one, trans brake. So now I can take my foot off the brake. And it holds it. So we can do a launch. But I can't do that because I've only got two lug nuts per tire right now. Oh, it feels so good to be driving this car again. Brake, brakes are great. Well, by the skin of a guy's big toenail, Liberty, the Chevelle, is going to make sick week. Putting it on a trailer right now. We're going to drop it off at my buddy's place tomorrow. He's going to do a 
legit alignment on it right now. We just got, you know, strings on it. And but don't get me wrong, there's going to be kinks to work out. It's a fresh build. There's things we got to work through. Um, <clears throat> you know, we might have to dial in the rear based on, you know, how the car sits ready for racing. We're going to have to work through tire pressure. We're going to have to work through jetting on the carburetor. We're going to have to work through timing. I mean, all that stuff. So it might be a bumpy couple days, but uh, man, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with just, well, I'm feeling really grateful. I appreciate you guys. And we couldn't do this without you guys watching and supporting the channel and our family. And I really, really appreciate it. This is a very nice car for our stable. And we're just happy that we can go out and have fun, make friends, see you guys, show that you can drag race and have fun. You don't have to have a billion dollar race operation and toter homes and big trailers and race teams. And um, it's just a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, a lot of work, but this car is gonna be in our stable forever. We've got too much time invested in it at this point to let it go. And I just love Chevelles in general. So look for this thing on sick week. If you can make it, that'd be awesome. We start in Orlando, we beep bop around for five days. There's plenty of time to interact, have fun, meet you guys, chit chat, eat a hot dog, wet our back neck, stuff like that. Walk around the cars, love to have the kids out. If they want to sit in the cars, take pictures, by all means, come out. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you very much. I think the next time I see you, we'll be drag racing. It's going to be fun. Thanks guys.